Uh, e mihi ana ki a koutou, uh, tēnei te mihi nui uh, ki uh, manawa tēnei whenua, uh, kia ora anō. Uh, he uri a hau nō Ngāti Tamatara, uh, Ngāti Maru, uh, hauraki whānui, uh, uh, ngā puhi, uh, Ngāti Raukaua, Ngāti Parau, uh, me ngā tūkoi, ko Eliata tēnei mauri ora. I am currently navigating a pretty crazy workload at the moment and uh, work in a number of spaces. Uh, in which I call my multiverse, partly because I grew up reading the comics that the movies are roughly about, and because I kind of like the term multiverse agent, hashtag proud geek Aotearoa. So um, I just want to uh, invite you into my, to my craziness and my multiverse. My why, the thing that gets me up every day, is a unification or a kotahitanga philosophy. So every time I look and I move within technology, within infrastructure, within education, I'm looking at how we bring those spaces together. So digital twins and smart cities, back when it was smart cities, um, and back 15 years ago when people like myself and the rest of the collective were moving in this space, um, has evolved quite significantly. Um, it, for me, as a person who moves in multiple spaces, smart cities was a, a logical area for me to move into. With a background in technology, um, infrastructure and education, my time was spent in these spaces is what I call my 70-30. 70% uh, governance, 30% um, in contracting, uh, and 30% uh, contracting and community initiatives on some days, or 70% contracting and community initiatives and 30% governance on other days. And or 30% governance, 30% business, 30% community, and about 10% spending time working out what it is I'm actually doing on said date and said time. She's a perfectly crazy life at the moment, definitely not suitable for long periods of time, but I am under the tutelage of some pretty amazing people that have moved like this for many years, so rock and roll. During the first part of my Smart Cities journey, travelling the world, observing, writing and presenting on smart initiatives in varying countries, the stuff the collective and I have seen over the past 15 years has been both awesome and highly frustrating. Awesome because of the five steps ahead and data-informed strategy that we've made with some of these initiatives, and frustrating because when I kept coming home to my whenua and looking at my own family, I saw nothing like I was seeing globally in the lower socioeconomic communities where I hail from. I'm from a little town called Tokoroa in the South Waikato. Then from Tokoroa I went up and I spent my teen year, teenage years in South Auckland. We lived in trailers. Bro, I've worked hard for everything that I have now and I can't see any of this or any of this kaupapa in there. So in my geospatial technology company, I used to take our geospatial um, tech and I used to take it back to the marae. And do you know what I was met with? What are you bringing this back for, girl? What's this stuff? This is a bit too flash for us. Times have changed. In fact, a lot of the corridor we were having back then is only just starting to make it into the marginalised communities that I come from now. Except these days, there's more than a few of us championing this particular focus in our spaces. So with that said, many of us within the collective continue to observe the equity gap increase and it is trending that way still. So over the years, after consisting lobby, consistent lobbying, Internet New Zealand came to the party with a focus, a focus on digital equity. From Internet New Zealand, the Digital Equity Coalition Aotearoa was born. Um, they are really proud that I'm standing up here representing our collective and our nationwide and global collective today in front of you today. They then came and had a talk to another board that I sit on, which is Learning Upper Tautahi, Learning City Christchurch. It's an e we develop ecosystems of ecosystems. And from uh, Learning City Christchurch, I then grabbed all the primary leaders within the Canterbury or the Waitaha region, the Sparks, the Enables, all the people that are involved in digital equity and brought them together into a governance group so that we can help better map and bring our ecosystems together. This is public, private, NGOs, all that kind of stuff that I know you're all doing today, aren't you, eh? It's all of you are doing that, eh? You're bringing everybody together? Paiana, cool. You didn't say yes, but hey, we'll get there in the end. 
So um, the Waitaha Regional Digital Equity um, Space was born. And from there, we could better understand what was really going on in our ecosystem and the stats that made sense so that we could, um, a, that could aid us in, in forming and making a digital strategy. A local digital strategy that connected to the regional digital strategy, that connected to the national digital strategy, that connected to the global digital strategy. Because that's what this is really all about. That's what smart thinking is really all about. So, I'd like to better understand where you fit in the digital equity scale. So I'm going to ask you a question, questions now, and just see where, where you're basically at. Who here has internet connection at home? Wicked. Keep your hands up. Do you have it now? Do you all have internet connection now? You should. Becca should be springing for some free Wi-Fi. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can afford it. And do you have um, for, um, internet connection 24-7? Cool, so some of you dropped your hands because you're doing it. Please yell out some of the spaces that have free internet connection. Go. Libraries, Libraries. done. Next. Bus. Bus. McDonald's. Thank you, McDonald's. No, but, no, but yeah, but no. But you know what I'm saying. I just lost so much weight too, so I'm like, no, McDonald's, no. Where else? Starbucks. Starbucks. Dunskis. Anywhere else? Work. Work. <laughs> Leverage the shit out of that. Yeah. Where else? Where else? Airports. Airports, absolutely. Where else? Shopping mall. Shopping mall. Cool bananas. When we think about our lower socioeconomic communities, do they have access to any of those spaces at all times? At all times? Think about rural. Think about some of those other spaces. So even though there's some free stuff going on there, do they have access to it all the time? No. One of my roles is uh, in emergency management. I lead, I get deployed out into these spaces and I lead in these spaces. These people, when they're cut off, they don't have access to any of those areas. Comms were down in Tairawhiti, comms were down in Hawke's Bay, in all those sorts of spaces. I'm sure I'm not preaching to the converted here because you've all got the resilience corded or probably going on in your own backyards, but it's, this is so very important what we're talking about. How many of you have multiple devices that you utilise for different applications? Bro, I'm taking the time with my mobile and this sort of thing and I developed the PowerPoint last night on my laptop. I had all three devices rocking and rolling. Most of you? Yeah, you know you do. Has the digital literacy, do you have the digital literacy skills to orientate everyday BAU, business as usual, and everyday life? Do you have digital literacy? Put your hands up if you have the digital literacy skills that you think that you need to orientate. Yeah, I'm still there too, bro. As a technologist, I'm still there too. <coughs> Finally, do you have the trust in your ability to navigate the digital realm? Well, I can't see hands, so I'm doing that and see. Choice says, cool. So all of you have a level of privilege, including myself, that some of our communities do not have. Don't worry, I was also annoyed at the fact that I had to be up at 4am this morning to hop on a Jetstar flight because I've got so used to drop flying Air New Zealand and that I couldn't go to the Air New Zealand lounge for my morning coffee, muesli and yoghurt. Talk about privilege. <laughs> Bit different from this trailer girl. Around 14 years ago, I remember standing in the back of the Auckland City Council Chambers as we pitched the concept of Digital Twin. We did the same in a handful of other places. We talked about how Digital Twins were virtual replicas of real world, real world assets, systems, enabling real-time monitoring, analysis and optimisation. We highlighted that they held immense promise cross-sector, aiding in cross-pollination, shared outcome and had the potential for mass positive impact. Today, I hold the same belief. What we missed back then, um, as we were highly driven by our excitement um, and passion for a technologically driven world, was that for digital twins to fulfil their potential, we must ensure equitable access within our communities. This is why the concept of smart cities has evolved quite significantly to what many of us smarties affectionately now know as smart societies. We've evolved our thinking. The digital divide is a frickin' stark reality that exists between those who have access to digital technologies, skills and resources, and those who do not. 
Digital equity has long lasting consequences leading to economic disparities. We still think we associate with equity with fluffiness. Bro, it's fully connected to, the, to our economic development. It's connected to our local economy, our national economy, and our global economy. There's no fluffiness about equity. Okay? I have to, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting to that point now in my career that I'm just like, this is a situation, come on. <coughs> Limited education opportunities and unequal access to critical services. Within the DE Collective in New Zealand, we primarily focus on four PO or four pillars, which serve as guiding principles to ensure that the immense benefits of digital twins are accessible to all as we don't want to leave anyone behind. PO Tuatahi, the first pillar, motivation. The motivation to embrace digital twins and, rel uh, and related technologies is a driving force behind widespread adoption. As we explore the potential of digital twins in varying industries, we must inspire individuals, organisations and organisations to see the value that they can bring. Motivation fosters a willingness to explore new opportunities, innovate and improve existing processes. So a lot of our work in this space is focused on engagement and awareness initiatives. For those of you who are currently working on your engagement, engagement and comms plans, can you look at each other's? So we can say the same things? So when we're hashtagging, we're saying the same things and lifting and elevate this messaging? Come on, we're so smart. This is a room full of smarties. Rua, po tu. Equal and affordable access to digital technologies and resources is fundamental in our journey towards equity. I'm not just talking about, do they have a fibre? a fibre optic cable, copper comms is going to be phased out in 10 years, we all know this. I'm not just talking about LOEs or low orbit satellites and who's doing what and is AWS doing that and <coughs> one's doing that and that and that. You're all part of the same ecosystem, bro. Work together. We need all of you to be rocking that stuff together. We, I just come from two ends, uh, the, the rural conference, rural connectivity conference, same messaging there as well. Addressing infrastructure gaps and expanding connectivity to underserved regions and districts will be crucial in this endeavour as we move forward. Toru, three, to fully leverage the power of digital twins, individuals, teams and communities must possess the necessary skills and digital, digital literacies. I just taught my mum uh, a couple of weeks ago how to look up her blood test results online because she couldn't get down to the doctors. There's all that kind of stuff. We're thinking it's all rangatahi. No, it's all of us. We're all at different phases. Some of us can code, some of us can't. Some of us are amazing with um, working out our email addresses and how we do all that crap, and some of us aren't. That's just the way that it is. We're always going to be at different levels, and we just have to acknowledge that as an ecosystem. Finally, building trust is the cornerstone of successful digital transformation. As we embrace digital twins and the vast amount of data they generate, we must prioritise data privacy and security, fostering trust amongst individuals, iwi, communities, businesses, NGOs, all the other people, industries, you know, everybody else, government, really important, thus encouraging um, broader adoption and participation. Digital equity impacts every area of our communities, urban and rural. It especially feeds into economic development, locally and globally, with a highlight on its significant impact on our digital trade economy. For those of you, I know there's a couple in this room that helped us do the digital trade stuff. Very cool stuff. Digital twins are at the forefront of innovation, enabling entities to improve productivity, reduce costs and drive sustainability. All of us that have been involved in digital twins for a really long time have been used to bleh, vomiting that out of our mouths. <laughs> But however, if certain communities are left behind due to digital equity issues, we risk stifling innovation and leaving un untapped potential on the table. And that's the stuff we've got to think of. We don't come from a deficit narrative. We've got lots of challenges, but it also affects us moving forward in opportunities as well and positive outcomes. Really important stuff. Digital twins have immense potential for social good including urban, urban planning to improving city and rural services, healthcare applications, how am I for time? I am sweet as because, 
um, rural services, healthcare applications for more personalised treatment, optimising public services and building resilience within our communities. But without digital equity focused initiatives, some communities may not benefit fully from these advances, advancements. Uh, some DE practitioners, so digital equity practitioners within our particular collective, are currently working with Kainga Order in Wellington, this is an example, okay, and have discovered a, the very conservative statistic that less than 50 to 55% of those in social housing suffer digital, um, equity, uh, digital, equity, digital inequities. So this thing about we're 97% sweet as with access for everybody and everyone's all choice, no, no cuz. You need a little bit more um, information. So these stats are not often present in our current digital inclusion reports. If you've never downloaded a digital inclusion report, get that down in your thing. You need to go and have a start, have a look at those particular statistics. Really, really important. Digital twin technology requires specialised skills and knowledge to utilise effectively. To bridge the digital equity gap, we must invest in education and skills development projects, uh, programs that provide equal opportunities for individuals from all walks of life. And in as an example, we were um, working with the Ministry of Education, just met with the Minister, had a good corridor with her, um, and we talked about rangatahi, so our youth and homework, so your kids and their homework. So consider a typical data plan from a commercial internet service provider. It can range from a few gigabytes to unlimited data per month, preaching to the converted. So let's take an example. Suppose a data plan costs about $40 per month and includes 10 gig of data. If the data usage is evenly distributed throughout the month, the weekly data usage will be approximately 2.5 gigs um, um, or 10 gigs over four weeks. In this case, the cost for data for one child to do homework for a week would be around $10 to do their homework. <coughs> Consider the cost of living and its impact on our families at the lower end of the economy. $10 a week. High quality data is the foundation of accurate digital twins. We all know this. However, if DE is not addressed, certain regions or community, communities may have limited data collection capabilities. So leading to incomplete or biased representations. How are you supposed to get good data for your digital twin if, you, if the areas that you're collecting data from can't give you any data? Oh my God, that's amazing. I'm sure you've all totally thought about that. And you know, I don't need to be here, rock and roll. Moreover, data privacy and concerns may disproportionately affect those without adequate resources to protect their information. A digiting, di uh, addressing digital equity requires collaboration. We not know all of this. We're all talking about collab. The how-to of collaboration is so very important though. We can't just keep meeting in cafes and, and it's great because we are funding our cafes with all the coffees that we buy and all the meetings and it's great and it's working, it's cool bananas. But we must be strategic in, in the A to B and why we're meeting with these people and how we're bringing them in. This is what's known as ecosystem strategy. What does that look like? This is our WRDE. I think we've got all three primary councils in that particular area. <coughs> we've got representatives from the Ministry of Education, from um, the Digital Ministry. We've got representatives from, oh God, I can go on and on. Libraries, um, Grace, you're there, we, were you Grace? From um, Smart Cities Christchurch, whoop, whoop, whoop. We've got Julian from Spark, we've got the Enable, it goes on and on and on. And there's more that's not there. And this is our little collective. And do you know what we do? We just go, what can we do to plug and play and help our communities as we go? And it's awesome. And our whole goal is to build community mana and build their self-determination. <coughs> Promoting digital inclusion means not just providing access to technology but also fostering an inclusive digital culture. So this includes creating accessible user interfaces, you people who are involved in this user face stuff because digital twins going to be user faces. You know you're going to have how many user faces did we have back in when we were doing the testing stuff? Heaps of them bro. So when we're looking at those user faces ensure that, we're, we're, um, that, that they are all accessible 
to all of those communities that we just that I just mentioned. Uh, it promotes diverse representation in technological fields and involving communities in the decision making process. Ecosystem engagement and comms plans need to align to ensure fluid messaging around community intergenerational engagement, awareness, self determination, and shared outcomes. This ensures a foundation to community led approach. So these are the foundational steps to that community led stuff. Don't call it community led and then you're leading it. That's bullshit. That's bad sales. No, naughty. I'm gonna share with you what we're doing. So one of the things that, that I've done, um, and one of the things I've done, one of the things the collective has done is that we've come together and we have now designed the digital equity assessment framework. Just picked up a nice little project which I'm leading for the Selwyn District Council. Anyone here from Selwyn? Ah, hey, look at how amazing you are. We'll have a cup of cuppa after this. So I'm going to be leading this particular um, this particular thing. We're going to do a district-wide scoping of a digital equity within a district. The, we spoke to the mayor, uh, the councillors and the CIO and what they're going to be doing with this data that we're collecting and all the stuff that we're doing is that's going to aid them in the formulation of the district-wide digital strategy. Then told, we told um, DECA about it, Digital Equity Coalition Aotearoa, then Internet New Zealand, DIA and MBIE and they went, hey man, we're so about this because the how-to of this could aid us in other regions. So this little localised project is now becoming a national project. Wicked cool smart. I then went to UC because I do a little bit of guest lecturing on converging ecosystems in that space and said, hey, can I write a paper about this and get some credits? They went, yeah, sweet. So we've got some academic rigour. It's called being smart. So why is this cool? This is about the co-design of local digital strategy. All right? So um, I need help. Anyone that has amazing ideas, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I'm going to be cracking onto the work anyway, but really cool. The other side of it is, is that um, many of us in the national space are looking at the integration of regional digital strategies, which will feed into the national digital strategy. So it's quite a big body of work. And there's lots of little branches that, that fall from bodies of work like this. But I thought I would share it with you um, as I'm about to close out. Super geek. You've got an ending slide and you put the Millennium Falcon on, you know you're a winner, right? <laughs> so important. At the end of the day, the transformative potential of digital twins can only be fully realised if we prioritise digital equity. By addressing the digital divide, investing in education, safeguarding data privacy and fostering collaboration, we can ensure that digital twins benefit all members of society, driving innovation, economic growth and a more equitable future. There are a few of us advocating in this space, but we need to engage with more of you to onboard more ambassadors. We believe we can all work together to build a world where digital twins serve as a powerful force of positive change while leaving no one behind, orchestrating positive outcomes for all. I encourage you all to get on board the waka explore and help us navigate our way to a choice as future. No reira, modi tu, modi ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ah, tēnā ratātou katoa. Kia ora.